my collection roughly is about 700 pieces altogether, but that's toys, shoes, jewelry, apparel, the full gamut of Jeremy's Guts world. Hello, Vogue. My name is Joey Adias, and I am devoted to collecting the work of Jeremy Scott. I've been collecting for about 10 years now, and I've amassed, you know, what seems like a ridiculous amount of clothes for one person, but truly, it's an archive that's a labor of love. And I wear the pieces on a daily basis. I don't collect to resell. I definitely collect because I fall in love with the piece, and I want to wear it. I want to give it a life out in the real world. Jeremy Scott's work just really speaks to my heart and soul and it's it's a part of my everyday life. It just makes me feel complete. There's this underlying love behind every collection that comes out. It's this celebration of life. This is my closet. This is where I house my Jeremy Scott collection. Visually it is a lot, but it didn't start like this. I had a jacket and a t-shirt to start with and a pair of shoes, but over the years, it quickly grew to need its own closet. It all started with this jacket. 12 years ago, I saw this online and I just thought it was out of control. It's gold, it has wings, it's fringe, it's leather, it's a motorcycle jacket, it's everything you could want. And I just fell in love with it, approached my husband about it like, I think I really want this jacket. And once I got it, there was no going back. This is another one of my favorite pieces from the Adidas collaboration, and it's a matador look. I actually wore this to the very first fashion show <laughs> that I went to of Jeremy's. Um, and it was a bit surreal because I remember us watching Project One Way and I told my husband it would be so cool to actually see a fashion show in person. And through Instagram, Jeremy's PR team reached out and you know, like some of my photographs. And then from that kind of grew to, would you like to come to a show? I didn't even care if I was sitting like in the broom closet, just to be there and be in that atmosphere is gonna be something completely new, something I'd always dreamed of doing. Of course, I freaked out not knowing what I was gonna wear to an actual fashion show. And it was a no brainer that I had to wear this. I get asked a lot, uh, you know, if I work for Moschino or Jeremy Scott or in fashion in, in general, but I don't. I am the clinical operations manager for a mobile dental company based out of Dallas, Texas. I do wear a uniform, we wear blue scrubs. And if I'm not in work uniform, on a daily basis, really anything I wear is Jeremy Scott. Dallas, Texas is pretty conservative. I do stand out a bit, but I think Jeremy's work in general kind of does that regardless of where it's at. I know people that you know use fashion as kind of an armor or kind of a shield but I kind of feel not only just putting this on, I feel like I'm really, truly being myself. It, it really kind of actually acts more as a welcome mat because it invites people to come and, and ask questions about what I'm wearing. For fall 20, Jeremy Scott did the macro New York collection. It was a mix of macro pieces and mini pieces. And on that runway was the macro nameplate. And it was highly sought after, almost impossible to get. And it's just out of control. I love it. And the reason this means so much to me, aside from the fact that it's a fantastic piece, is that Moschino sent it to me for my birthday. I've only worn it twice out in public. <laughs> People want to try it on. They want to take photographs wearing it. I let them. But that's kind of the energy that Jeremy's work brings. People are just kind of drawn to it and, and they want to ask about it. For fall 2017 men's collection, the Transformers collection, Jeremy introduced the idea of this harness sweater and it's iconic. So I was prior military, I was in the Air Force. I always was really fascinated by the harness gear that some of the emergency vehicle drivers would wear or stuff that the pilots had. It's a bit bondage inspired, but it's directly inspired by flight suits and the harnesses for their parachutes. I had to get one, but by the time I was trying to purchase one, it had already sold out. And through the power of Instagram, I tracked down this harness sweater. He also was a Jeremy Scott, an avid collector. Um, and he had one. I traded him a considerable amount <laughs> of items for it, but I had to have it. I didn't care. And I love it. <laughs> As a child, you know, my sister's Barbies are <laughs> fashion ready and we would play with them. But I grew up kind of being told, you know, that's not what boys do and men don't care about what they wear kind of a thing. And so I felt I needed to be a certain way and past those formative years into my adulthood and 
and you know relationships I, I kind of found myself in the same situation where I was with guys who were telling me not to dress so gay or you know don't don't wear that that's too loud but when I came upon Jeremy's work it, it just like awoke something in me I think that little kid inside of me like really fell in love with what was in front of him and saw himself playing with these life-size Barbies on the runway. Jeremy's approach to fashion is definitely tongue-in-cheek. He really doesn't follow any kind of guideline or rule. It's truly what is coming out of him. Like, it's what he's emoting onto the runway and it's about fun. It definitely doesn't take itself too serious. If I had to choose one piece as my favorite above everything, it's this Happy Meal bag from Jeremy's first collection from Moschino. I think McDonald's is so ingrained into my childhood and growing up we didn't have a lot of money and McDonald's was kind of this exotic play place that you know kind of the rich kids always went to and had their birthday parties at and this Happy Meal bag was like the number one piece from that collection I had to have and it's just so fantastic. From the details of the handle to the face that's embroidered on it and you know the Moschino over 20 billion served which is a play on McDonald's slogan. Another of my favorite pieces is this giant toothpaste bag. Being in the dental field, when I saw this come down the runway for the Women's Fall 19 game show collection, I just knew I had to have it. Not very many were produced. I kind of had a little struggle trying to get a hold of this bag. <laughs> Not very much of this stuff is practical. <laughs> but I love it nonetheless. <laughs> it's a vinyl bag with 3D printed top and people typically want to try to take it off. Actually, I was wearing this in the streets of New York and down on the subway and I had it on. I was approached by people who thought that I was selling toothpaste or, or giving out samples of toothpaste. And I was like, no, no, this is just my bag. My wall of fame has 35 pairs, but altogether I have roughly about 67. How did it happen? <laughs> The collection just kind of grew exponentially and it's by collection that it grows too, right? It's not just like, it's a pair here, a pair there, but by collection, there'll be like three or four pairs that I feel like I can't live without. But like for his Adidas collection, of course, the wings are iconic. I've never thought about how much I've spent. I try not to think about it, but how can you put a price on love? I definitely, you know, keep a little piggy bank for as a rainy day piggy bank, but really it's for uh, collections, but going in there or watching the runway shows, I never really think too much about the price point initially. <laughs> I just kind of just watch and look and feel and touch and what it is that really speaks to me. Then I start thinking about the price point and I have to figure out when I can purchase something. This is a crown from Jeremy's first men's collection for Moschino. It actually has a counterpart that I have been searching for for years. It is a brown monogram version that's bejeweled and I only know of three of them. Jeremy has one. One of my lovely friends, Hans, he has one that I've been trying to buy from him for years and he won't let go of it for sentimental reasons. And I understand that, but he doesn't wear it. <laughs> and uh, I want to give it a life. So if you have one out there, feel free to reach out to me because I, I need a counterpart to this crown in my collection. It truly would be the crowning piece to my collection. This is one of my most favorite looks of all. It's from the Spring 20 collection. And it's Moschino. When I saw this come down the runway, I immediately fell in love. That entire collection spoke to me and it just moved my spirit. Something else I find interesting is when people are like, I can never wear that. It's like, yes, you can. And I think that the moment that you do do that and kind of push yourself past what you think you should wear, it just, it's a life changer. I kind of grew up forcing myself into this idea of who I was supposed to be. And what I saw in Jeremy's work is I saw myself and I saw someone saying, it's okay to, to just wear what you want and then do what you want. It kind of gave me the okay and validated this, this desire to dress out loud. Jeremy Scott is aware of my collection. I do little closet tour stories on my Instagram and he's seen them. He will send me a direct message and I'll be like, every time I see your closet, my mind is blown. And he's thanked me for displaying his work with such respect. I think he really appreciates it. Um, he knows that I have a completely deep love for his work. So long as Jeremy Scott is creating and, you know, putting stuff out, I don't think that I'll ever 
be done with my collection. I'm definitely at capacity. I teased my husband that we're gonna have to put a second story because I have to grow somehow, somewhere. Either it's a second story, some kind of addition to the house, or we might have to start looking for another house. <laughs>